is very clear. Thank you. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Thanks for your patience. Thanks for your patience. All right. So, All right. so please, can you mute your mic? You All right. Thank you. Okay. So, um, these are the outline, like I said earlier. Uh, and this is the COVID around the world, if you understand what I mean. So, in response, the Iranian hit a US base in Iraq in a move to, that seems designed to save face rather than an overt act of aggression, which I think was wiser for Iran, actually. Like I was saying, that Nigeria livelihood revolve around, completely around oil. And that's very instructive because 60%, 60% of our um, income is from oil sales and 90% of our foreign exchange is on oil. And don't forget, just about three, four years ago, we had an issue. Just about three, four years ago, we had an issue. And the issue we had about three, four years ago was the issue of recession, and you know what caused that recession? The same oil. The same oil. The same oil was what led us to recession. And the price then was not as low as it is today. The price then was not as low as it is today. Which is why this session is so important because it's going to learn, make us begin to see the opportunity available that we can take advantage of as an individual. In February, Britain officially divorced from European Union. And that's a major event in February. And of course, the novel COVID-19, which began in the industrial city of Wuhan in China, quickly spread across the world. That started in January. By February, the disease has spread beyond Asia continent to Europe and America. And of course, Nigeria is not spared today. The virus has promptly labeled a pandemic. The monetary, uh, physical, and scientific authorities scrambled to contain the situation Central bank around the world were forced to, forced to react, slashing rates to level not seen in the Great Depression. By March, the world was full, in full panic, as government struggled to reign in the situation. Government struggled to reign in the situation. Federal government around the world quickly announced unprecedented physical stimulus package in order to alleviate the effect of the pandemic as the number of those infected rose exponentially. The Saudi uh, uh, and Russia led coalition of OPEC members to work together to be able to have a cut in fuel price so that to reduce significantly the supply and be able to increase the price. But unfortunately, you know, I was discussing with someone on this oil issue. He worked with NMPC and he was telling me that, as at the time, that was almost two weeks ago when he was talking to me about, no, early last week, he was telling me that as at that time, companies in Canada were willing to give their oil price at $1. And you know why they were willing to give at $1? They were willing to give at $1 because if they, if they shut down the platform, the cost of bringing it up is more expensive. So they would rather keep the platform producing at a minimum rate and give it out free than shut down the platform. And that's exactly what we are seeing right now. That's exactly what we are seeing right now. This led to a full-blown oil price war with Saudi slashing the price of oil to many customers and vying to supply more to the market. As a result, oil price fell 56% over the month, but now it has gone to all-time low. I mean, it's unprecedented that oil price would be that low. On the home front in Nigeria, was the home front was not left out of the global headwind. Earlier in January, monetary policy raised the CRR to two, uh, from 22.5 to 27.5. However, as the coronavirus went on its deadly rampage across the globe, extra pressure mounted the Apex Bank adjusted its rate. So, you know, CBN, and this was why, you know, before the rate went, because CBN adjusted its rate on I and E window, Bloomberg wrote a report, and the report was that CBN will soon devalue Naira. And you know what people did? People took a position immediately. A lot of people went to buy dollar and kept it, and the price I remember I was to pay for the uh, exam of some of our students on the trade certification program we do. And I bought dollar in the afternoon at 365 by, no, 370 in the afternoon. In the evening, it was 380. That was on Wednesday. By Thursday, it was 400. By Friday, it was 420. And it keeps going up like that. Keep going up like that. Why was it going up like that? It was going up like that because... Please, can you mute your mic, please? Can we mute our mic? 
can we mute our mic? Okay, I think I found the person. So the dollar went up. And along the line, CBN eventually decided to adjust its exchange rate officially on the IIE window. So on the IIE window, they neither adjusted to 380 to a dollar. So officially, it's 380 <laughs> to a dollar. And the pace of reserve depletion also kicked up. Now, for those that might not understand some of the things we are talking about, in any nation, when you import, it's like you are spending from your reserve. When you export, you are crediting your reserve. So it's like a family. Imagine a family. A family that is any more that is spending, that family is heading for disaster. A family that is heading more than is spending, that family is heading for disaster. Imagine a family that has 500,000 in his account, in, their, in his account as the head of the family, 500,000, and he's, he earns 50,000 a month, but spends 70,000 a month. That family is, is spending 20 dollars, 20,000 naira more every month. At that 20,000 naira more that he's spending every month, in in 20 months, he would have spent 400,000. In 30 months, he would have spent 600,000. By after two years or two and a half years, he will be in deficit because he's spending more than he's earning. That's exactly the case of Nigeria. We are doing a lot of importation. Our source of forest is mainly oil, which is monoculture oil. Then other sources are FDIs, free foreign direct investment, and FPI, foreign portfolio investment, and the remittances. But a number of, you know, out of all the sources of, of FX, countries that are developed, countries that are very, very, that manage the economy very well, they ensure that they have control over their FX. How do they have control over their FX? They are exporting. The only source of effect that you have some control over is being able to export. But when you export, you are able to, but in Nigeria, we are exporting quite all right. In fact, you will see the data very soon. We did over 60 billion in export last year. Unfortunately, it's just majorly on one commodity, over 90% on one commodity. And that is the challenge we have in Nigeria. Two years ago, it was 90 something percent. Last year, it was 80 something percent. So we are better off in a way, but it's still not good enough. Because in some other countries, as we see later on, a number of them are able to do a lot better than we are doing. FDC, that financial derivative company, it said, said a second recession in four years is clearly in the card. In 2016, it was incomplete and belated response to oil price crash. In 2020, the trigger was COVID-19 and preemptive measures on the part of the monetary and physical authority will more than likely not be enough to starve off the looming threat. So four years ago, external reserve was $25 billion, while uh, external debt was 11. We have a buffer of about 14. Today, the buffer are down to 9 billion as external debt has more than doubled. So our external debt is 26. 26. Can someone, ah, I don't know how to just help people. <laughs> All right, I have to mute the first person. Now, today, the buffer is down to 9 billion. External debt has more than doubled. External debt is 26.9 billion. Even though our, S, our reserve is 35, external debt 26, if you net it off, we have 9 billion. External, 9 billion as buffer. Now, now, we don't have that 9 billion. You see that 9 billion, we don't have it. You know why I say we don't have it? We don't have it because you know we are having a judgment debt over us, open around our neck. That is the P and ID debt. If that debt eventually crystallizes, we don't have anything in our reserve. So, as far as Nigeria is concerned, we are, we are, I don't know, I don't know what to use. Because that 9 billion was exactly the judgment debt of PNID for those of us that are following the story when it broke the other time. And the government has to pay to be able to continue the case because we ignored the case and they came after us and we had to eventually negotiate with them. So the impact of COVID-19 on the Nigerian economy is still, dimension, still dimensional. The force is from the medical and healthcare perspective. The second, which is the reason why we are shut down. You know, it's one thing for your oil price to be down, for, um, another thing for you to be working and see how you can do something about it. But in this case, double tragedy, the oil price is down, number one. Number two, we are on lockdown also. The second is through the slow in trade and investment and project financing, considering that Nigerian largest and most important trading partner is China and India, who are on lockdown. The third is through the plunge in oil price and its devastating impact on the macroeconomic stability. If you have not seen the chart, look at the oil price plunging. Can you see it? Plunging below zero. Below zero. 
that is unprecedented. That is unprecedented. That is unprecedented. Look at this chart. If you look at this chart, you will see the I and E inflows is the red one. That's the investor and exporter forest window. This is the foreign reserve. Can you see our foreign reserve? Can you see the way it's coming down? Can you see? Can you see? Can you see? We're not. <laughs> can you see where we are? Now, um, I and E inflow foreign, foreign portfolio investment. That's this. Can you see it's down also? Foreign portfolio investment is down. The local sources, they're all down. CBN is the, can you see CBN contributing immensely to salvage that market? Because the major sources of inflow, now this is why export become imperative for Nigeria. And of course you expect inflation to begin to rise now. I mean, that one is no brainer. You expect that. And of course we were in reception before, we have come out, but we're likely going to go back from the next quarter. Most likely from quarter one, we're likely going to go back, uh, from, maybe from quarter two rather, if we have double, um, um, Reduction in, uh, in consecutive quarters. Sorry, I'm having an issue again. All right. So let's move on to the post-COVID era proper. There have been a lot of postulation. I checked online and I saw a lot of postulation about the post-COVID era, but this one caught my attention. This report zoomed in on 10 shifts driven by changes in human behavior. Industrial dynamics, so we expect a shift to happen in many fronts. Human behavior, industrial dynamics, technology, regulation, macroeconomic, and geopolitics. But let's look at the human behavior because if we are focusing on trade, because our focus will be on export trade, it's going to be driven by human behavior. So even more anxious and loneliness and depression, damage and trust in hygiene of people and product, this is the 10 shift in this report, extended travel restriction even within a country, Optimize work from home, which we have already started in Nigeria, beyond typical office job. Rising tension and conflict in all levels because people are looking for money. Everybody is trying to take a position to be able to make more money. So, and China will be a major victim. China will be a major, major, major victim. And the reason is, everybody is asking China to pay, to pay for the pain they are causing the world because of the fact that they are not being truthful in being able to open up on the cost of this pandemic. So I even understand uh, Germany have sent their bill already over 230 something billion euro. They have sent their bill already. Some people are suing them. I mean, so many things against China. And you know, this is what thing. As China exported the coronavirus to the world, people are also exporting their company out of China. South Korea is willing to pay their businesses to relocate out of China. You know, what was shocking for them is the fact that China shut down all factories, made the whole world to realize we were having a concentrated risk in China but we were not knowing, we, people didn't ever imagine this would happen. Uh, whoever thought that in Nigeria, the big men in Nigeria will be sick, they won't be able to travel. That is unprecedented. It, it, it was just a change in the whole thing that's happening in the world, that re, big men in Nigeria will be sick and they won't be able to travel. And many people never envisaged that, which is why the road, I mean, the hospital were not being fixed. Same for other countries in the world. Many people could not believe their eyes that, can you imagine that China will shut down all the factories? and their company were affected. So they are incentivizing their company. You know, uh, Trump is already against that. Trump is already saying everybody should come back to America before. So this is a strong point for him to bring them back. A number of them are already coming back before now. This is a strong point for him to bring them back. But for the China and for South Korea, they are willing to pay their citizens. And a number of companies in Europe are seeing that, look, we've been very foolish, depending solely on China because of cost of production. So people are moving out to different countries, and some of the very attractive places include, um, I think, um, Vietnam and some other country in Southeast Asia. Africa should have been a very good attraction and will be eventually, only that we have not, the cost of production is still reasonably high because of infrastructural deficit. This is the time for everybody to move into Africa, but some of them are still going to come because of the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. On precedented level of global unemployment, and that will happen everywhere. US is already recording over 10 million lots of jobs. Same also in Italy, in Germany, in UK, in every part of the world. Our own data is not out. Maybe by the time we will get to see what our own is saying. Take out home, take out and home delivery of everything. Limited contact with older generation because they are more susceptible. Other identities um, are, is more than our job and then the value of certified immune consumers. So anxious, people are more anxious now. Many people feel, uh, feel more isolated. 
they will lose their job, get confronted with sickness, and face relationship issues. If not all at once, major challenge, major challenge, major challenge. Damage and trust in hygiene of people and product. With corona and with the viral nature of COVID-19, consumers and organizations are becoming more careful about the people and products they interact with. They are more careful about the people and products they interact with. Extended travel restriction. Why? Because, I mean, even when we resume back, there will still be travel restriction from some countries. And the reason is obvious. The reason is obvious. The travel restriction is going to be based on the fact that some countries are still going to be experiencing COVID-19 while some countries would have come out. So we expect some restriction in travel, even after we must have uh, we're out of COVID-19. We expect some restriction in travel. Um, optimize work from home. That is becoming a fad now. Everybody's working from home. And even I, we have to adjust as a company, training that we will normally do every time in the morning on Saturday is now being done directly. Online. So, I mean, we do a lot of training program on certification program. And since this thing started, <laughs> we've been doing it online. And guess what? When we're doing it physically, we were not having 100% attendance. Someone will have one issue, one delay, one traffic. But today, a lot of people, we have 100% attendance. So we are adjusting already to this lifestyle. Rising tension and conflict, I've spoken about that. Everybody wants to uh, survive. And there will be a lot of first major issues. People sign contract without first major. We are going to have a lot of cases that court will have to decide because of this first major issue caused by COVID-19. Unprecedented level of global unemployment, naturally. A lot of, even in Nigeria, in fact, it's so sad, really. Because a lot of companies really cannot survive a month or two months without earning income to be able to pay salaries. So now we are going to have a whole month go through and there are indications that there might be extension. And if that happens, you expect a lot of unemployment. People are going to, a lot of companies have to downsize because they need to survive themselves. Take out and home delivery of everything. So people are delivering. I mean, for example, most of our people that are registering for our training this time, man, ma maximizing the COVID-19 period to be able to lend themselves at home. They, they, so to be able to maximize the COVID-19 period to lend, we have to be using courier to deliver everything to them. We, we, use, we print, get the guy to deliver to us, and then use courier to deliver. And so courier companies are having a field day <laughs> and delivery organization. So there are some winners in this challenge. Limited contact with older generation because they are more susceptible. Um, our identity is more than our job. For many, your professional role in a, is, a, is a significant part of who they are. So mixing work and private life debunk their superficial layer. So only now many are getting to know their colleagues at a deeper level. <laughs> because many people have to stream from their home. Have to stream from their home. Then value for satisfying a new consumer. If your business model relies on packing many people in tight spaces, malls, um, cinemas, churches, weddings, mosques, any, anything that will bring people together, no, that is seriously affected right now. Any business, that your business is such that if people don't come together, you cannot make money. That is a challenge right now. If, and that means there is need for retooling. There is need for re-strategizing. Why? Because of COVID-19. What are the propensity? Propensity, here I'm talking about business. Look at the gainers. So you can see here the winners. The winners are medical supply services, food processing, personal health care, ICT, e-commerce, agriculture, oil and gas. Oil and gas, we have winners and losers. The losers, education, financial services, manufacturing, construction, um, automobiles, aviation, and tourism. They all, so we have winners and losers. That means the loser, we have to retool, 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 re-strategize on how to survive. Uh, you know, aviation, tourism, hospitality, they are the worst hit also. Worst hit because people are not traveling. Summer this year is, a, is going to be people that their business thrive on summer are in trouble. Are in trouble. So people must re-strategize. There are some businesses that people will have to stop. A sharp and unprecedented drop in demand with a ripple effect deep on the value chain. So restaurant VP drop. 
sorry. Restaurant visit drop uh, close to zero, less alcohol consumption, beer and beauty under pressure, farmers are losing their revenue. <laughs> because people are not going out. Look at this chart. Look at this chart. You will see something here. You will see impact, tourism, very high impact, very high. Because it involves large gathering, large gathering, very high. Close human interaction, very high. Hygiene and perception is very is high. Dependent on travel, very high. Service and product uh, or product is postponable, very is high. Impact high. Sports, you, you and I know the, for the for the first time in history of Olympic, it was postponed. First time in the history of Olympic, it was postponed. First time in the history of Olympic, it was postponed. High. Uh, music, high. Automobiles, high. Beverages, medium. Retail, medium. Pharmaceutical, low. Pharmaceutical are part of the winners. Uh, beverages and retail are part of the winners because people must shop. I mean, you must eat. <laughs> you must survive. So the, build, the interesting thing here is that we must begin to think of retooling, re-strategizing. Now, and that's saying that as a professional, you need to ask yourself a very critical question. The business you are doing as a professional, the business you are doing, you need to ask a very critical question. The business you are doing, how much, sorry, I, 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 the business you are in or the business you are serving, that business you are serving, is it what going to be affected? What skill do you have to be able to survive at this time? If your sector is affected, that means you need to re-strategize. You need to re-strategize. And I would strongly recommend, I would strongly recommend, not because I'm in trade, but because no matter what the issue is in the world, people must eat, people must trade, people must eat, people must trade. And, and I will show you, uh, when we are rounding up, some of the businesses that we must be considering. And the data that are showing that, look, there's no way we won't have to trade. So trading is something we must still do. So no matter the challenge, we will trade. We will trade. So that means if there's a skill a professional need, it's a trade-related skill that can be used in importing company, in exporting company, and in banking, and in any other company that is into export of goods or services or import of goods or services. Why? Because we must survive. Imagine, U.S. is having issue with tissue paper. Nigeria produces tissue paper. U.S. is because a lot of factories are shut down. They are having issue with tissue as small as tissue paper is a big issue in U.S. That means countries that are able to come out of this on time have an advantage to be able to produce fast-moving consumer goods. Fast-moving consumer goods. Fast-moving consumer goods. Look at this data. Immediately after uh, September 11. This data was showing the things, because it's also affect the economy of the U.S., and we cannot post, uh, extrapolate it today. These are the degree at which people cut off expenses. Can you see household expenses, 25% reduction? But look at this one. Um, food, buying food outside, 58% redu reduction. Buying food outside. Consumer electronic, 53% reduction. So you can see clothing. What are the things that have lesser reduction? There are things that have to do with fast moving consumer goods, what people will do, what people will wear. So the things that we will need to concentrate on are the things that are needed for human survival. Healthcare and drug, household products, food at home, health and beauty products, mobile cellular services, utility bills and services, non-alcoholic. Now, can you see, these are the ones that people, the cut down on it was low. And we expect the same in this new era. We expect the same. We expect that people are going to cut down low in this area. That, so that means that people doing these businesses, home improvement, media and entertainment, apparel, consumer electronics, food, they, wait for, they are in trouble. Toys, because they are non-essentials of life. They are non-essentials of life. People are going to concentrate on the essentials of life. So if there's a skill, people must begin to look out to acquire because our world is going to change forever. Either we like it or not, it's going to change. We are not going to go back to where we were before. We are not going to go back to where we were before. And we expect a significant change. Look at the way it's impacting China. What is currently happening in China? Now, if you look at this, you will see here hygiene product. Hygiene product, they are comparing last year with this year. Year on year growth. Year on year growth. Hygiene product, 150% increase. Food, instant food product. Can you see? 
over hundred percent increase when you compare the demand this year to last year. Demand is at the instant food, infant food rather, baby food. Can you see? Baby food, groceries. Can you see? Groceries. They, they are comparing the increase between last year and this year. So basically means that any business that would thrive in this age must be a business, must be a business that's meeting basic need of people. So here's another analysis that some people did. Look at this. They are looking at 0.5 year in the next six months. Some businesses, they, have, they are making money now. Any business making money now, making money now because they are doing e-commerce. Those kind of businesses, they will have, <laughs> in the next six months, right away, boost supply to keep up and with the demand surge. In the next one and a half years, push for more growth. Push for more growth. In the next three years, aggressive push for growth and market share. But let me show you one. See the people that are catastrophic, sustain revenue loss of plus 50%. Quarter two to quarter four, tourism, tourism, tourism. In the next three years, you might have to abandon that market because currently it's facing challenge and it might increase. If we are not able to contain this, it might increase. Basically talking about the fact that some businesses are going through that the propensity. But look at this. At a time like this, you should switch. Mitigating the biggest risk in cru is crucial from the health and safety operational as well as a P and L point of view. This is an ongoing effort. So you should switch from defense to offense. Offense. But it is time to prepare for the next phase. Industry where, uh, that were stable for a decade were now wide open to turn around. Now, what has happened in the past? At this point in time, a lot of companies in the past, when they face challenges like this, they just simply re-strategize. You know, someone said, don't be too loyal to what is working and thinking it will not change. Some people have been too loyal to what is working. They fail to re-strategize. They fail to position themselves that if this happens, what will I do? If this happens, what will I do? Don't be too loyal to what is working. Your sector, you feel, oh, I'm okay. I'm good. I don't need any uh, additional qualification. I don't need any this. My sector is good. Now, the sector is threatened. That means there is need for retooling. If I'm an accountant, I want to add trade to my skill. If I'm a lawyer, I want to add trade to my skill. If I'm a bank, I want to add trade to my skill. Anything that will involve trade. The reason for trade is trade, not just regular trade in oil, not trade, not like that. Trade, but trade, especially as related to fast-moving consumer goods. Maybe you want to go into production yourself to sell in Africa, which I'll be talking about later on. Or you want to position yourself to be attractive to look for market and help businesses in that space to grow. Or whatever the case is, you want to look for opportunity at this time. To be able to grow during the recession, Sanofi, the French pharmaceutical company, increased its absolute R and D expenditure from 950 million. Someone is still not muting. Someone is still not muting. From 950 million in 2000 to 1.3 billion in 2003, because of the challenge they faced, they increased their research and development. They began to look for other area. So you must begin to. Look for other areas. So they did a lot of research and stumbled of other products. So businesses must do research and development. Individual must do research and development on themselves. Which area do I need to improve as an individual? Which area do I need to improve as an individual? Which sector will be attractive going forward? Which sector will be attractive going forward? Alibaba outbreak of SARS, Alibaba, the outbreak of SARS was a pivotal moment that put Alibaba on its path to becoming $470 billion e-commerce company. Cosmetic company, Lin Grandin, was forced to close 40% of its store due to COVID-19. The company redeployed on its 100 plus beauty advisor from the store to become an online influencer who leveraged digital tools such as WeChat to engage customers virtually and drive online sales. They didn't relax, they changed strategy in their marketing. So it's a time to, to move to, to offense rather than being uh, um, and saying, uh, oh, we are, we, are, uh, we, are, we are like an underdog right now. We, we can't help ourselves. That's not the way to think right now. We must also see to offense. What can you do to help yourself? Now, as I round off, let's look at the products. Look at Nigeria last year. Below are the most exported products last year from Nigeria. Now, Nigeria is a very major endangered species. So, sea oil and gas, sea oil. Can you see oil? 79.37%. Can you see gas? Six. If you add it together, that's about 85% of the 
of last year earnings. 85% of last year earnings of Nigeria was from oil and gas. 85%. 85%. That's why we are we are we have a, an endangered fish here. and that's why i love the statement of the cbn governor this is the time to re-strategize all the decisions the federal government cannot take because they don't want to step on toes this is the time to step on all the necessary toes scatter the toes take the decision that we need to take to re, to, re, to readjust the the direction of this economy because if we don't do it we will waste this opportunity everybody is struggling for safety so nobody will say you are taking this step you are doing this you are, you are being protective yeah nobody will say that right now because everybody is scrambling for safety right now. So it's a time for Nigeria to scramble for safety. It's a time for Nigeria to scramble for safety. So look at it. You know, double tragedy for Nigeria. Double tragedy. Tragedy number one, we depend mainly on oil. Tragedy number two, other things we are exporting, they are mainly agricultural products. Mainly agricultural products. Other things we are exporting are mainly agricultural products. Mainly agricultural products. Can you imagine? Look at the import item. We are still importing PMS. So this is one of the things draining Nigerian foreign reserve, PMS import, draining Nigerian foreign reserve. Local and diagnostic apparatus. Why can't we produce this in Nigeria? Use vehicle. Can you see use vehicle? $1.9 billion. Use vehicles. Use vehicles. Motorcycles. Gas oil. Wheat. These are the major items of import of Nigeria. Now, look at what Nigeria spent. Nigeria made on export last year, $62.53 billion. 85% of that was from crude oil. 85% was of crude oil and gas. So you can imagine, it's like a family. A family that earns 100,000 Naira. 85% of that 100,000 Naira is off. 85% is off. And the remaining 15% is not sure. So 85,000 Naira is completely out of the window. Because the government actually benchmark. Can you imagine we benchmark at, I think, about 40 something or 50 something dollars per barrel? That's our benchmark. We keep chasing dollar, I'm um, chasing uh, oil up and down and using it as the way. It's just unfortunate. But like I said, for me, this is an opportunity. Opportunity for us to retool, re strategize, and be able to, going forward, have a better Nigeria. And for you as an individual, also, look at import 55. So the Nigerian trade last year was. Over one, about 117. Not Nigerian trade last year was about 117 billion dollars. That is more than that's more than 25% uh, of the Nigerian GDP. So trade is a significant aspect of our national life. More than our GDP is not even up to 400 dollars, 400 million dollars, 400 billion dollars. It's about 390 something billion dollars. And trade alone, trade alone. Trade alone, import export is 115, 117 billion dollars. That's interesting. 117 billion dollars. So, what are the products now that we should look at? Now, I will look at Africa first. I'm more interested in Africa. You know why? Everybody are going to go back to their agreement, free trade agreement. They are going to go back to what agreement do we have? What are the advantages? Where are the low hanging fruit? So Nigeria should be looking at the low hanging fruit right now. Where are the low hanging fruit? Here are the low hanging fruit. We have an agreement already in ECOWAS. We have an agreement in the, in the whole of Africa right now. We have an agreement in ECOWAS. We have an agreement in the whole of Africa right now. So what are the things we should be looking at? These are the products. Can you see potential, on top potential, actual export? So this is the potential. This is the on top potential. This is the actual export. This is on top potential. You see this green here? So that means we have on top of the in, in minerals, in machineries, in other food. But on this list now, on this list now, post-COVID, focus on fruits, beverages, cereals, vegetables, vegetable oil and fat, anything that has to do with fast milk, fish and shellfish, beauty and cosmetics. Those are the things you look out for. You see all this apparel, all this metal, all this uh, 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 motor vehicles. All this uh, machinery, forget about those ones. Forget about those ones. Post-COVID, even though they have potential, everybody wants to survive right now. Look at Nigerian export. This is the export of Nigeria to Africa. Can you notice something? Agricultural export. Who are we exporting agri to? America, Asia, Europe. Those are the people buying our agri products. The people that buy manufactured food and non-food products from Nigeria is Africa. See Africa. The, these guys will not buy from us. So we must begin to re-strategize in as much as we cannot uh, completely eliminate those markets in Europe and America, but we must look inward in Africa. It's so critical and so important. It's so critical and so important. We must look inward in Africa. Why not looking away from 
country outside. So anybody doing manufactured goods or semi-processed goods are the one that will have an advantage now. If I'm into commodity, many people will prefer to buy secondary commodity, tertiary commodity than primary commodity right now. Many people prefer to buy, there are people who buy primary, but people doing primary, they are subjected to unnecessary price fluctuation because of the, what the market is telling them, unnecessary price fluctuation. And here is the list, but I won't be able to go through this because of time. Uh, we just want to spend one hour. Look at this. Look at the same thing. In 2011, 2016, can you see retail food, beverages, and tobacco is what Africa is buying more? Food, beverage, and tobacco. Can you see it? 2016, can you see? Household cleaner? No. Clothing? Electronics? In Africa, generally, and to go beyond Africa to other part of the world right now, people are going to live more for survival. More for survival. More for survival. So what are the potential opportunities post-COVID? Potential opportunity post COVID. Look at this chart. Africa in trafficking trade is less than 20%. So in Africa is less than 20% in the post COVID era. Who is distracting? In the post COVID era, there will be an increase in the intra regional trade in Africa. And Africa, international trade. And Africa have a very huge opportunity to create jobs and grow its economy. Look at the huge opportunity to, for trade in Africa. Huge opportunity for trade in Africa. This is what we are exploring. That is the trade among Africans. European is going to increase trade among themselves. They are going to explore their free trade agreement to be able to, and because they must trade. So everybody look for a free trade agreement to explore. Because every other country might close up. They will explore their free trade agreement that they already have with other countries in the world. So look at this. Africa, uh, Africa's export to China. So China is still a major market for us, but Generally, Asia is not a good market for us. They trade a lot among themselves. China is the major one buying from us. China is the major one buying from us. So you can look up to China when you're looking outside. In post-COVID era, there will be an increase in intra-regional trade. But if China will buy more from you, raw materials and semi-processed food uh, items, raw materials and semi-processed items, you know, they are the factory of the world, even though that will likely change very, um, in, in the nearest future, but they are currently at least the factory of the world. In the post-COVID era, there will be an increase in intra-regional trade based on bilateral and multilateral free trade agreement in Asia and EU, because it is a low hanging fruit for their growth. Therefore, Africa must begin to look inward for, to, by leveraging on AFCFTA to create job yeah. and grow its economy. African manufacturing import three times as high as manufacturing yeah. imports. So manufacturing is one of the major things, manufactured products is one of the major things Africa imports. Three quarter of African merchandise exports are primary commodity. This is one of the reasons why Africa is going to be worth hit in post COVID. Worth hit because primary commodities like crude oil are going to go down in price. And we already see that in crude oil. And it's going to happen in other commodities. Yeah. It's going to happen in another commodity. It's going to happen in another commodity. People are going to be affected. So people must begin to think. You know, there's no reason why Nigeria should be thinking of commodity exports sincerely. I, I don't know why yeah. we are still thinking of commodity exports in this day and age. People will complain to me and say, ah, and I'm going to propose solution towards the end of this presentation on what we can do to start producing. We don't need, everybody does not need to set up a factory to produce in Nigeria. We don't need to all set up a factory. Yeah. If we want to set up a factory, then we will have a long journey. But there are ways around it, and I'll talk about that very soon. In trafficking trade is less than 20%. In the post-COVID, there will be an increase in inter-regional trade, and Africa have a very huge opportunity to create jobs and grow its economy true intra-African trade, but it has to be manufactured goods. It has to be manufactured goods because we import more of manufactured goods. We import more. See the world. Can you see the world? This chart shows the country that produce different category of goods in the world. Can you see fuel? That's crude oil. See crude oil, Nigeria. Crude oil. See all the people doing crude oil. They're in trouble right now. Apart from those that have reserve. You see the Middle East? Most of them are very wide. They have reserve. They have reserve. You see the Scandinavian countries, they have reserve. A number of them have reserve. They are very small countries, but they have over 500 billion in reserve. Nigeria, less than 40 billion in reserve. <laughs> and if you net off our debt from it, you know that we don't really have enough buffer to be able to support our efforts, to be able to support our efforts right now. Look at this one. Export structure of developing economy. Can you see Africa? See Africa? See America? See Asia? Can you see manufactured goods? Can you see the level of manufactured goods in America? Can you see manufactured goods in Asia and, and Oceania? That's Australia. See the manufactured goods in Africa. So these are the people that have reserve. They are the ones that have buffer. They are the ones that will try in the post-COVID. Why would they try in post-COVID? They will try in post-COVID because they are going to produce what people need. 
They're going to produce what people need. They are going to be producing what people need. Major item of export of African country is fuel, a commodity that currently sells at a price lower than that of a bottle of Coke due to price volatility. This is a wake-up call for the value, for value addition in the post-COVID era. So if we were not ready to add value before, post-COVID is saying, go add value. Go add value. Look at this again. Can you see annual growth of different category of product? Annual growth of different category of product. Look at this annual growth. From this annual growth, can you see, can you see this? Can you see this? Fuel. This is one affected now. So this is this one is affected. What's the next one? Manufactured goods. Agri also. People will see by agri only that the price will be a challenge. And you know in Nigeria, immediately dollar go up, fine men are going to increase their price. Middlemen are going to increase their price. They are not going to be profitable. They will say dollar is 400, so you must buy cocoa at a higher price. Dollar is 400, after all. So you must buy cocoa at a higher price. You must buy cashew at a higher price. Everything you buy at a higher price. And if the people don't buy from you, then you're on your own. Out of the three rapidly growing category of exported items in the world, only manufactured goods will be viable post-COVID because the price of commodities like agriculture and fuel are going to go down because of the low level of demand. Look at this one. Can you see developing country extra trade? These are the extra trade, extra um, export and import. You see this? See our import. See our import. See our import of manufactured goods. So can you see the gap? See our import of manufactured goods. See our import of manufactured goods. A number of those manufacturers can produce them. A number of them can produce them. You would think Nigeria cannot produce, uh, what was the name? Um, ventilator. But today, Different people have come up with model of ventilator, Nigerian version. Today, many people were not thinking of producing, um, what was the name? Sanitizer. Sanitizer. Today, people are producing sanitizer. Necessity is modern invention. The challenge in Nigeria is because we have alternative, we are not thinking. We are not thinking. Post-COVID is telling us we should think. There is nothing anybody is producing anywhere in the world that Nigeria cannot produce. There's nothing we can produce. It's just for us to be ready to do it. If we're ready to do it, we will import the technology if necessary. We will develop our own technology if necessary. We will use our ingenuity if necessary, and we are going to do it. The reason why we are not doing it is because we have alternative. It's because we have alternative. It's because we have alternative. Out of the major category of item of import in Africa, the manufacturer will constitute about 60% of the total import value. 60% of the total import value. Okay? Uh, market concentration index of export. Market concentration index of export. Look at this concentration. And if you look at that chart, there's something very interesting about that chart. Something very interesting about that chart. That chart is giving us a, a sense. That chart is giving us a sense of something. Look at that chart very well. You will notice that it's saying the concentration. Can you see manufacturer is on his own? Manufacturer manufacture is on his own. Why is manufacturer on his own? Can you see just there on his own? Everybody, many people are here. Very few countries. This is talking about how, how many, how much countries are doing a particular product. So few countries are doing manufacturing. Very few. Out of all the major traded category of products in the world, it is only manufactured goods that are traded by fewer countries. Because here it's talking about the index measure, the extent to which a high proportion of export is delivered by a small number of economy. So small number of economy deliver this, but high number of economy deliver this. That's why the value is very, very low because the opportunity there also is very low. Same, still just telling you the same thing. I'm just showing you the same thing in different ways. Look at Africa, look at Central um, Africa, Eastern Africa, West Africa, totally Africa, 50% of export of Africa is on process, 50%. But look at West Africa, 80% of the export of West Africa is on process, 80%, this is where Nigeria falls, 80% is on process. Cocoa, cocoa, cocoa is a major foreign exchange earning. Why are we not adding value to it? Why are we not adding value to it? Look at this. Look at the reason why household, household um, consumption is very important. These are the GDP of African countries. The household component of the GDP calculation of African countries, 2017. In the post-COVID era, the drive for survival is going to, uh, to grow more, especially in Africa. And that means export business must be focused, must be focused, uh, export business must be focused on food and fast-moving consumer goods. Export business must be focused on food and fast moving goods. So can you see household consumption? See where Nigeria is? Nigeria, household consumption component of GDP of Nigeria is 80%. So when you look at Nigerian GDP, there's a consumption component there. 
Out of that consumption component of GDP, household is taking up 80%. Can you see this country? See this country? <laughs> Eritrea. Eritrea is when I'm 28%. <laughs> Chad, 95%. Averagely, I discovered that 60% of the G consumption component of the GDP of African country is on household consumption. Food and fast moving consumer goods. That's the way to go. Post COVID, that's the way to go. Look at this chart again. This chart showed African consumer expenditure in major retail sector. They are buying beverages, food, tobacco, and uh, those are the things that we're buying. Sorry, I'm running against time. I want to ensure I finish on time. Um, now, if I'm looking at market in Africa, Nigeria is a good market for those that want to come into Nigeria. Tanzania is a very good market. Egypt is a very good market. Um, Tunisia is a very good market. South Africa, Ghana, high priority. The blue are high priority you can consider. Mauritius, Botswana, to consider the green. You see the place not to go? High risk. You see these places? These are places not to go. These are places not to go. Potentials. See on potential. This chart shows household spending. Look at the spending. Nigeria is a major spender in Africa because of our population. Can you see Nigeria? Can you see South Africa? Another major spender in Africa. So if you are exporting, who are the people that have the money to spend? Egypt, they are another major spender. Angola, another major spender. Um, Algeria, you can see the others. But these countries, Nigeria, South Africa, Egypt, Angola, Algeria, Morocco, Sudan, Kenya, are major countries we should consider. Now, like I said, it's not to look away from Europe and America, but I'm saying, look, because of free trade agreement we have in the African continent, we are better off trading in Africa. And they will accept our manufacturer good more. And we are better off exporting manufacturer good in this era of post-COVID. Hence, the major focus on Africa in my presentation. These are not without problems. We have problems, no doubt. See oil price? This chart shows the price of crude oil going below zero. And this is supposed to be contributing 60% of Nigerian income and 90% of foreign exchange. According to the competitiveness, global competitiveness, Nigeria scores 47%. Look at Nigeria in Africa. This is the competitiveness in Africa. Nigeria is here. So we have a challenge. These are the people above Nigeria. But the beauty is that we are still above many people. So we can still produce reasonably. And I will suggest some of the things we can use to produce and reduce our cost of production pretty much soon. And these are the elements for the classification, but they are not very important, so I will just keep them. So look at this. Corruption perception. Nigeria is still very corrupt. Very, very corrupt. Out of the top economy in Africa, we are the number one. Out of top economy in Africa, ease of independence, we have moved a little bit above Algeria. So maybe we are getting better. But if you look at inflation, Inflation now is projected to be about 15. This is as at last year, 11%. So we have problem. Look at the problem. We have the problem of um, we have the problem of products, paperwork, payment, people, port. Port is a nightmare. Port, packaging, profit, processing, pay promotion, and purchasing or purchase order. I won't be able to elaborate on this because of time, but these are the challenges that Nigeria currently we have to contend with. We have to contend with. But the challenge can be fixed through government support. And I'm going to tell you, government does not have a choice. They must support, else they will not get their own tax. So they are already working on a similar package to support so that they can be able to get tax and be able to pay salaries. Team, we must work together. One of the things we really find difficult to do in Nigeria is working together. If there is any time for collaboration, this is the time for collaboration. This is the time for collaboration. And then training. And I was talking about some of the certification program and training that you might, you might want to do to be able to take advantage of the opportunity very, very soon. To be successful in the export business, you need to follow this principle. You need to partner, look at foreign partners, product must be competitive. You must have passion to go global. You must plan very well to avoid failure. And you must be persistent so that when there are challenges, you don't leave because there are challenges. You must be very, very persistent. So how do we participate as I land up? How do we participate? How can we participate? Now, I'll answer some questions also. How do we participate? It would be great if you can type in your question. Just type in your question so that when I finish, I'll go and read the question. And if there are other ones, I'll take them. But as I'm going ahead, just type in your question. Just type in your question. How do I participate? To participate in export, you can be an active exporter. You can be a passive exporter. To be an active exporter, you're exporting you are a product exporter or service exporter. You see this one? We are not doing it enough in Nigeria. Service exporter. You can export your service as a lawyer, 
You can export a service as a technology person. You can export a service as an accountant. A lot of professionals can export their services. You can export it. If you go online, you can get to know about it. You can export it. If you chat me, I can send you some of materials, some audio materials that I've done in the past on service export. You can export services. Product exporter. Product exporter. Product exporter. This is the one we are focusing on. Manufacturable commodities. These are the two options. You can be a passive exporter. How are you going to be a passive exporter? Number one, export investor. Export investor. You can invest in exports. From time to time, we have investment program with guarantee to secure the capital that people can invest in. So whatever the case is, like currently we have a project going on, no matter what the challenge is, there is a guarantee from a tier one bank in Nigeria to secure the funds. So no matter what the challenge is, the capital are very much secure by a tier one bank in Nigeria. So we have that, and you can also look for that among your friends. You can invest in an exporter, and you can use to generate. In fact, some people want to convert their money to dollar. This is a good way to convert your money to dollar. You invest in an exporter and you negotiate with him to get your money back in dollars so that you can avoid the, the challenge of uh, FX that is affecting Nigeria. You can convert your money to dollar. An export can make that happen. Export professional. You can be an export professional either as a banker, as a trade lawyer, or as a trade broker. A banker, a trade lawyer, or a trade broker. You can be an export professional. Export professional. How do you achieve this? Now, look at this. Capacity building, this is the time to maximize the power of the Yahoo Yahoo boys and convert that energy. Convert that energy. They, we need more people to be searching for buyers for Nigerian products now. And the Yahoo Yahoo boys have the resilience for that. If you can channel their positive energy to be able to. And currently we are looking for sponsors. People that can sponsor Yahoo Yahoo boys to become more productive on the internet. There is a certification they can do with American Institute of Extended Studies. And if you can get sponsor to sponsor like 10, 15, 20 people, we can train them and they can begin to earn money by looking for buyer for Nigerian businesses online. So you can do certified basic, you can do, sorry, executive diploma in export trade finance and executive diploma in export business management. This is a certification you can do right now. This is a certification you can do to retool and re-strategize to find your, create a space for yourself in trade, especially on the export side, especially on the export side. Um, we also have this program in case you want to start up yourself. We have this program. We call it from export nobis to export legend. From export nobis to export legend. And this incorporates, this particular program incorporates the executive diploma in export business management. It incorporates that into it. Now, here is the summary. As we start the post-COVID season, here are the shifts that must be made in order to survive this season. It has to become, <laughs> it has become highly imperative. It has become highly imperative very, very highly imperative to move away from community exports, to focus on export of secondary and tertiary products, to collaborate in a lot of ways, especially for SMEs in the area of product packaging, to collaborate with Nigerian abroad in order to secure new um, export markets, to have a representative at destination to be able to mitigate the increasing risk of default, to shift focus to African market and export finished products to them, to focus more on export of secondary products to China, Europe, rather than commodity, to collaborate for contract manufacturing. That's what I was talking about. Contract manufacturing. If there's one thing government must do right now, is for the government to partner with private sector to set up a processing plan to process different products for Nigerians. So that means as a, a, a manufacturer, or a, a, an SME, I don't need to own my factory. I just need to go there with my raw material. They will process for me and package for me. It's already happening in another part of the world. That's the way they grow SME in another part of the world. Besides that, I can collaborate with people that are already producing to produce for me in my own brand. So I'm saying you don't need to set up a factory. I currently export PAP out of Nigeria, and I've been doing that for more than two years, and I don't own a factory, but I export PAP and beans flour to the UK and I don't own a factory. Demand from government to mandate and support, uh, to mandate support of Nexim Bank through export credit insurance. We need export credit insurance to protect Nigerian exporters to be able to ensure that their payments are not compromised, especially by unscrupulous buyers. The ability, to, the ability to overcome the challenges of export business lead to great possibility beyond imagination. This is because it is capable of creating a great platform for repeat business from the same buyer, a great platform for referral to other buyers, 
replicating the business model in another country, redeeming your country image, recruiting multiple partners and distributors abroad, rebuilding broken bridges between nations, and of course, raking in more income. And the reason why you rake in more income is actually because you are actually making more because of exchange grade differentials you get. There's no doubt that post-COVID will come with the initial pain, but that will not be too long for those that will be prepared and position themselves for the possible opportunities that is about to show up in the world. It is, a, all, it is um, also important to say that most of the top economy in, the, in Africa, we need to make some adjustments in order to start exporting to Africa also uh, what they have not been doing before. Nigerian SME businesses, we need to collaborate in a number of ways. Joint negotiation of freight and, and shipment, joint procurement of related uh, raw materials, joint venture with church. Now, and I'm using the word church. Nigeria has been exporting religion. We can leverage on the church, and that's why church must write up this location. We can leverage on the branches of churches of Nigeria across Africa to grow export markets. Sincerely, I don't know what the government can do with them. We can leverage because there are Nigerians in those markets. And we can easily build trust. We, we're not going to throw caution into the wind, but I'm looking for the low hanging fruit that we can use to be able to generate salvage Nigeria because we need presence on both sides. And Nigerian churches have exported religion successfully. We can be, we should begin to use that platform to export products. Joint engagement of partners at destination market and joint promotional program at the destination market. As I conclude this presentation, I would like to say to everyone that if we want to diversify our economy, if we want to create jobs in Africa, if we want to grow our GDP, if we want to create employment, if we want to boost our foreign reserve, if we want to increase wealth, if we want to reduce poverty, aggressive drive for interregional trade is the way to go. More importantly, in this post-COVID era. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Sorry, I was rushing because I needed to finish on time. I have another session by 8 p.m. So let me take your question now. Let me take your question. <laughs> I can see some question. Um, someone said, can I talk more a bit more about promotion? The reason why I'm not able to talk, I, I, I've, I've given a, a way we can promote. One of the ways we can promote is to leverage and partner with Nigerians abroad. Nigerian institution abroad. That's why I use church, because I know churches have expressed, we have expressed religion successfully. Nigerian institution abroad. Other Nigerian institutions abroad that are not into export, you know, into trade, we can leverage on them and work with them. Nigerian banks abroad, very fantastic one. Nigerian banks abroad. Niger people like Ecobank, Ecobank, and UBA. Those are those two banks, they are well positioned to help Nigeria if they know what to do, if they know what to do. UBA Access and Echo Bank are well positioned. Access Bank also, I think I said also have branches. Access Bank, that's true. Access Bank are well positioned, well, well positioned to be able to take advantage of that. And, and I think that's the reason why Asset Bank is trying to acquire the, there's a place Asset Bank is trying to acquire right now in East Africa because they are more in West Africa and not in East Africa. So Nigerian Bank can help also. Um, can you tell us briefly how one can export product without having a factory yet? You basically partner with someone that have a factory. That's all. Identify the product, partner with someone that have a factory. You can create your own brand. I already, the program Export Nobis to Export Legend, that's exactly what we are doing with it. Through the Export Nobis to Export Legend, we are helping people to be able to create their own brand and export without having a factory. We already have clients doing it, so it's not like a proposal. It's not, a, it's not an idea. We have taken it from the point of idea to the point of, of reality for some clients. When doing contract manufacturing, what leverage do you have to negotiate terms and price that is favorable to you and why will manufacturer allow contract manufacturing? Let me tell you, many manufacturers cannot utilize their capacity. They have excess capacity, idle capacity they are not utilizing. It's only foolish manufacturer that will not want to produce for someone else. Because he's not maximizing his factory. His staff will work for five, six hours a day. They could have worked for eight, nine hours, and he will pay them the same salary, and he will make more money. So any manufacturer that will not do that, I will be shocked. I will be very shocked. He needs to be educated. That manufacturer needs to be educated if he will not do that. Because he will make more money. He will make money from you. It's like he's, sell he's actually selling to you, only that he's not adding his own brand to you, but he's actually selling to you. So he's making more money. Why will he not do it? I have done it, and all the people I've approached, none of them have said no. 
because they are going to make more money. They are going to be able to produce more. So if you have a and Mr. Talabi, if you have a, a sector in mind and, and you are approaching people and they are giving you issues, let me know. Let me know. I will be able to help. I have a number of manufacturers that I work with that are producing different products that can help you. Um, can we? And uh, no, the presentation cannot be made available right now. We are going to use it on different platforms. So we are going to make the audio available, not the presentation, but the audio will be available. The audio and video will be available. I'm recording the video right now, and the audio and video will be available. I can assure you of that. For presentation, we will not make it available because we are using it right now for different people. Um, quite insightful. Can you please share the presentation? I've answered that. Thank you. I appreciate it. Is now a good time to export commodity like palm oil? Yes, not palm oil is not really a commodity because it's value added, so it's a lot better. But don't export it, you need to export it as a finished package product. Export it as a finished package product, not in commodity like a drum, in a finished package product. I've exhausted the question. Is there any other question before we close? Let me hear your comment, just your Can comment. Can we send an email? Your comment. Can we send okay, an email? Okay, okay, okay. that's true. Yes, drop your email. Drop your email. Drop your email for the... No, this is it. Go to 3T Impest TV on YouTube. 3T Impest TV on YouTube. Write it down. Then check my name. Can you see my name? Bamidele Ayemibo. Can you see my name? Search for that name on YouTube also. You will see the video on YouTube. So you don't bother, don't bother sending your email. Bamidele Ayemibo. See that name. Note it down. Search it on YouTube. By tomorrow, you will find the video on YouTube. And then if you search that name also on SoundCloud, if you search that name on SoundCloud, you'll find the audio on SoundCloud. If you search that name on SoundCloud, you'll find the audio on SoundCloud. Any other question? Okay, yeah, I think I have some um, Mr. Sonia, go ahead, please. Mr. Sonia, long time. Yes, sir. Yes, how are you, sir? Very well, very well. How are you doing, sir? Thank you very, very much fun. for the insightful presentation. So Thank we... you very much. I, 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 spoke, I think I have mentioned this to you at some point. We currently export uh, Kulikuli in, in, a, in a park uh, okay. to, to the US. Okay. And, we, and it's gaining traction in the North American market. Fantastic. And we have been considering ways of entering the European market. UK seems to come uh, first in mind, but how yes. would you advise we? approach the UK market. I have someone that is particularly interested in Kuli Kuli that I work with in the UK. So chat to me privately. I will send me the picture. I will forward it to the guy. And then you take it off from there. I've been working with him for two years. I've been shipping to him for two years. So I met him personally. He's a Nigerian in the UK. He's a counselor in the UK, actually. He's a Nigerian, but a counselor in the UK. So he's been in the UK for a long time. And he's the one that helped me distribute my product in the UK. So I, will, I can link you up with him in the UK. Thank you very much, sir. All right. Thank you. I also yeah, have any other question. Question? Yes, Moi, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Uh, my own question, do you have, or what do you think the market is like out there for aphrodisiacs, natural aphrodisiacs from Nigeria? That's the Kayamata and so. Ah, uh, in Africa, I think we have an advantage. Sorry, I, I don't mind me, I've had that name, but I really do not know it very well. Can you describe it in a layman language? <laughs> okay, I'm talking about um, well, both female and male aphrodisiac natural health, sex and enhancers. Sex enhancers. Thank you. Oh, it has a huge potential. I know a lady that exports it to the US right now. The lady even put it on um, on uh, on Amazon, and people are ordering it on mm -hmm. Amazon. You put it on Amazon. People are ordering it on Amazon. There's a potential for that. I mean, there's a potential for that at any any day, any time. So there's potential for that in Africa. There's potential for that in the US. In, as a matter of fact, everywhere. What is important is that it's natural and it's really, really, um, uh, um, uh, what do you call it now? Um, effective. If it's effective and it's natural, so that people don't have a lot of side effects because people are having a lot of medical issues right now because of this kind of uh, uh, drug. But for side effects, I mean, for, for, for natural one, I think it has a huge potential. I think it has a huge potential. All right, thank you. Any other comment? Any other, any other person asking question? All right. Thank you very much. It's been an interesting evening. Thank you um, very much, um, Mr. Dele. Yes, Mr. Wale, you are the one that initiated it. Thank you for bringing it up. Thank you very much, sir. We love you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you.
Bye, guys. Thank, thank you very much, sir. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for making it. Bye bye. Bye bye, sir. Bye bye, sir. Yeah. Bye. -bye, sir. Bye. bye, sir. Thank you. All right, bye bye. Thank you. Have a good evening. All right. Thank <laughs> you.